Hello, I'm Alan Bow. I manage the SaaS apps team at Analytium. We're a UK silver partner of SaaS. And when we're not building apps for SaaS customers, which is what we do primarily, we're building the tools that help us build those apps uh, faster uh, and better. Today, we're going to talk about AF applications. So if, you've, if you're working with AF, you'll be familiar with screenshots like this. AF applications uh, live on your desktop. Um, we're going to talk about moving these to a cloud environment as a HTML5 SaaS powered web apps that look a bit more like this. So a bit more about AF SCL. Uh, what is it? It's a it's a uh, app development environment that you get when you license SaaS AF, and it comes bundled within the desktop SaaS product. It's very fast. Uh, after all, it has the the SaaS runtime there locally on the machine. It's also very flexible in that it's very easy to take these frames and create uh, parts of an interface and, and use some SCL to to power those dropdowns. And the fact that many of these apps, these business applications have been around for 10, 20 years or more is really testament to how robust this technology is, uh, as well as SaaS's willingness to, to keep supporting it. However, all good things uh, come to an end. And yeah, on the support point that uh, there's, there's, there's an end of life for AF SEL at some point in the future. Uh, it's not part of the, the VIA roadmap, for instance. And then in terms of scalability, now if you want to deploy an AF app to a new employee, for instance, you're going to have to deploy uh, all of those artifacts and configuration to that employee's uh, machine or all the machines that they use. And then when they no longer need to use that app, you potentially need to uninstall that. So it's not very scalable. And also in terms of security, all of the, the code and the artifacts are stored there locally uh, and they can easily be modified. You can break out of a frame and change the, uh, the queries that are actually running at the back end. So what we really want to do is, is move all of this to a, a web app architecture uh, with a with a HTML5 front end and a powered by a back end, uh, ideally using some kind of beta database. It's going to be much more secure. All of that code is fully secured at the back end. You'll have some kind of lock-on mechanism. Far more scalable. It's easy to, to add more users and to remove their access. And also in terms of support, it's uh, usually very easy to find a generic front-end developer to, to build out that part, and the same for a back-end developer. Now, I haven't mentioned SaaS so far on that point because uh, at this point, some customers would think about potentially migrating their app to, to use a different technology at the back end. And I would say, of course, anything is possible. However, uh, as, as those who are embarking on, on, on those kind of projects will, will, will find that there's a, a significant migration cost if you've got something that's been working very well for, for decades um, with some complex business logic and there's no other language really quite, quite works the same as SaaS. There's a significant migration cost. Um, uh, on top of that, you have to consider all of the uh, other issues, like you're going to have to run another environment, you have to think about firewall security, authentication, authorization, another language. Uh, whereas the option to just keep all that within SaaS is quite appealing because the migration can be quite rapid. All of that SaaS logic can be lifted and shifted. Uh, even the SEL can be migrated. I'll come on to that. And of course, SAS can natively read SAS data sets. It's already got all of the access. You've already got the SAS environment. Um, every request uh, is authenticated with SAS logon. SAS comes with a web server and an application server. And of course, you probably already have a SAS team who, who could support a, a modernized version of the app. So going with SAS, uh, SAS doesn't have um, any new AF type language for, for the front end. So the front end, uh, the, the way to go for the front end for sure is uh, building a, a completely new front end using JavaScript, uh, ideally using React or, or Angular or some framework. The benefit of a framework is that it takes away many of the smaller decisions like routing and handles things like how to uh, manage different browsers, um, adapt to different screen sizes um, and uh, create uh, apps in a way that is secure in terms of variable scoping, et cetera. Um, so that would be decoupled from, from the SaaS backend. Now, what, what's going to happen with all of those frames uh, that you've got in your existing app? Well, actually, you're probably going to throw all of that frame code away. You can't really reuse it apart from unpacking some piece of functionality. 
Um, and, and the way to go is really take screenshots and recordings and talk to users and build a completely fresh UI based on, on your existing application. So that's the front end. We'll have a standalone front end, uh, all the interface logic driven by JavaScript. And now at the back end, uh, this is where we the a, a migration project would look to yeah firstly eliminate the SEL by eliminating the SEL you eliminate the need for the AF license, um, and all of that SaaS logic would would migrate onto into SaaS web services, uh, so so SaaS would provide the the data to the application. Now a web service would be a stored process on SaaS nine. It could also be a, a job execution service on Fire. And generally, you'd want to uh, rewrite that SEL using pure base SAS. Uh, but if you've got a lot of it, that can be quite time consuming. And we at SAS Apps, we've got a kit, we call it the SEL transcoding kit that lets you reuse SEL logic. And what we've done there is we've recreated the SEL functions and functionality using regular base SAS code using PROC, FCMP, and macro which can really accelerate a project if you've got a lot of SEL. But in general, you probably want to try and rewrite that using regular SAS. And then in terms of the catalogs, so there's three main parts to what goes in the catalogs. There's the, the frames, which we're going to throw away. The S lists, S lists are a bit like JSON. Now, if you're using the SEL kit, you'll need to keep the S lists, but we migrate them to a database. And then there's the source code. So source code should go in source control, uh, such as Git, so uh, we eliminate the catalogs and, and keep all the source code in source control. File system elimination. So I'm not talking about eliminating the file system, but rather the use of it. So the traditional way to, to work with SAS is that everybody shares a, an auto call library and a system of macros on a, on a directory on the server, uh, which can make apps quite fragile if things change. And also it's difficult to test changes when multiple developers share the same environment. So the SAS.js approach is to eliminate the need to store your source code on the SAS server file system by bundling it into the web services themselves. So I'll come on to uh, what is SAS.js. So SAS.js is an open source, fully open source, MIT. There's no restrictions on commercial use. DevOps framework. So it's a framework that we've built to make SAS app development faster and safer. And there's three main parts to it. There's a macro library. There's an adapter, which handles the communication between uh, the front end and SAS at the back end, which also abstracts away the differences so that you can just as easily call SAS 9 as you would SAS Fire. And there's a CLI, a command line interface, and this makes it uh, really easy to handle the automated CI, CD uh, deployments, uh, as well as testing and documentation and a bunch of other uh, tricks. So uh, there's some more links there. You can go and explore the framework. The benefits then is that it really enforces, it's, it's an opinionated way to build apps and it handles uh, things like that, that the front end should remain separated from the back end. So SAS just manages the data requests, which also makes it quite platform agnostic. You could very easily migrate just the very change one, depending on how much integration you have with say metadata, you could change one config setting and move immediately to SAS Fire or run the same app on both systems. And yeah, being being opinionated in terms of how the project is set up means that it's much faster to onboard a new developer. And also all the documentation we've got around the, the framework means that uh, when you get started with this, that you've got resources that can get you up to speed quickly. It's Git native. And this is one of the big changes when it comes to working with SAS.js versus traditional uh, SAS development on a server. You build your apps locally using a IDE such as VS Code. And you would say, pull uh, or clone a Git repository, you'd make a branch, you'd make a feature, um, you'd push that feature, uh, you'd make a merge request, that, that merge request might get reviewed, and you'll compile and build your backend services locally and push them to your SAS runtime, which could be SAS 9 or SAS Fire, initially to a, a specific folder, say in SAS Drive or in SAS Metadata, which means that you can, in isolation, test your changes before that gets merged to, say, a development branch or a master branch, uh, and, and then it becomes available to, to, to testers or, or your end users. A lot of this is driven by the command line interface. 
examples of some of the uh, commands we've got is sas.js test, which lets you write tests for your web services, macros, and jobs. Um, and uh, sas.js doc, which will use Doxygen to generate HTML documentation for all of your services and macros and jobs. And sas.js lint, which is something you could run as part of a, a Git hook or uh, as part of a deployment process to check the quality of your SAS code. So it will enforce rules such as uh, no trailing space, uh, line length, um, nested macro definitions, and things like that. It's all documented. You can um, see all the, the commands here. So why partner with us? Uh, we've obviously, well, we have extensive experience building and migrating SAS apps, AF, SCL ones, Particularly, uh, we've got front and back end developers. We maintain the SAS.js framework. It is open source, but uh, we, we, we maintain it. And uh, we've got these accelerators, the, the SEL kit, as, as well as this portfolio of existing SAS apps that we can use to, to build new apps more quickly because we can take those parts and, and migrate them over. Uh, if you've got, um, if you'd like to know more about, about this process or, or about migrating AF, apps to to SAS, you can you can follow these links or you could actually just go to Google and type my name and put AFSEL Alambo AFSEL and uh, you, you can see some of the content that we've created. <laughs>